Hey folks, my name is Bob Mandel, owner of Holding the Line Guide Service located on the eastern edge of the Texas Hill Country. What we're going to do today is demonstrate a horizontal casting technique called the sawtooth method. All right, so this sawtooth method is so named because of the pattern the lure will travel when you're fishing it. We're going to make an initial cast. The lure will drop straight down to bottom. Then we're going to use a series of handle turns to bring it on the diagonal up towards the angler, then let it drop. Up towards the angler, let it drop. Up towards the angler, and let it drop, and so on until the cast is complete. So we're going to talk you through this one step at a time. After we cover this technique, then I'll go and use the latter portion of the video to cover gear, rigging, some additional tips. But uh, for right now, let's get to the meat. So first off, I'm going to make a cast out as far as I can, and that will allow me to cover as much bottom as I can on a given cast. Now, as we look at the reel, I'm leaving the bale open after the lure hits the water. I'm also going to turn the reel sideways and putting slight pressure on the spool's lip, I'm going to allow just a little bit of line out at a time so the wind doesn't blow a huge bow of slack that I have to then contend with later. All right, the lure has hit the bottom. I'm going to close the bale by hand to avoid wind knots and then take up the slack. All right, if you look at my rod tip now, you may be able to see I'm using a blue line that I am in direct contact with the lure. The, the line is taut. All right, coming back to the reel's handle now, I'm going to start a nine handle turn series. The first two handle turns are going to be hard and fast, and then I'm going to transition back to a little bit slower retrieve for the remaining seven handle turns. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I'll open the bale and let the lure fall again using my thumb on the spool's lip to minimize the amount of slack that gets in the line which may be blown by the wind. I'm going to close the bale now that the lure is on the bottom, take up my slack, and here we go again. Nine handle turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Open the bale, let the lure drop with control on the spool lip. Close the bale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Open the bale, let the lure drop. Close the bale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until the retrieve is complete. Okay, now that you've seen that one time at uh, slow speed, I'm going to do this at full speed, and this time we're going to focus on the rod tip. It's essential that you get the spinner's blade spinning in order to make this lure effective. So I'm going to give you some tips on what to look for so that you know the lure is working effectively. All right, so open the bale, make a cast, lure hit the water, I'm leaving the bale open, letting the lure fall. Lure just hit the bottom, close the bale, take up my slack. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the rod tip. Right now, I just have a taut line between the rod tip and my lure on the bottom. I'm going to do my first two hard handle turns, and you will see that rod tip load. It will flex towards the lure and will stay flexed as long as I'm reeling. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stop, and you see the rod tip relaxes. I'm letting the lure fall taking up my slack. Let's watch the rod tip again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Relax. Lure's falling. Taking up my slack. Here we go. Nine turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on, all the way back to the boat. Now, the second way to know that your blade is spinning is by feel. 
if the blade is not spinning, you'll feel that lure just glide freely through the water. When the blade is spinning, that rod tip bows and you'll feel the strain or the resistance of that lure in your rod tip and in your hand. Now, a lot of my clients will ask me, Bob, when I'm retrieving, why are you having me open that bale? Why can't I just stop reeling and let the lure fall to the bottom? Well, here's the reason. When you reel those nine times, the lure climbs up off the bottom. When you open your bale, it allows that lure to fall directly vertically down to the bottom. If you don't do that, the lure is going to more slowly pendulum held back by the drag of your line, that entire area over which it pendulum to the bottom is going to be missed, not fished effectively, and the amount of time that you wait for the lure to sink is going to be increased. So that opening the bale between series of nine handle turns is done to increase efficiency, to be able to catch more fish over a given period of time. Okay, so a lot of people will ask me, Bob, which of the MAL lures is most appropriate for this technique? All right, so there's basically three different varieties of MAL lures. There's the MAL original, that's the lightest. There's the MAL heavy, that's the middleweights. And then there's the MAL dense. The MAL dense, in my opinion, is the best one for this technique because it casts the furthest and it sinks the quickest. How do you know if you have an MAL dense in your hand? Well, it's the only one in the series that has a white or chartreuse colored body. They all have a colored tail, but only the MAL dense has the colored body. Now, in my demo, I had you casting and then retrieving nine handle turns. All right. Here's what I found. Sometimes the fish will get lazy. They like to follow it for a long time and hit at the very last minute. If you're fishing with the MAL dance using this sawtooth method and you find that you're routinely getting hit on the eighth or ninth handle turn right at the end of your retrieve when that lure has climbed the highest, what I suggest on your next few casts is adding an additional handle turn or two. Go to 10 cranks or 11 cranks just to give yourself peace of mind that you're not stopping the lure too soon right before some of those fish may be ready to catch up with it. As you retrieve your lure, bringing it back to the boat in that sawtooth pattern, be sure to work it all the way back to the boat. Your last set of handle turns should be bringing that lure nearly vertically up off the bottom. Why do you want to do that? Well, not all the fish that you attract are going to overtake and strike the lure. But you will have days where, as you retrieve over and over again with multiple folks in the boat, you will draw fish in from around you and they will break off the chase and therefore collect right in the vicinity of your boat. If you are a Garmin Live Scope user, or you play 2D sonar and watch it, you will often see fish appear on the screen and rise up into the water column as you finish up your retrieve and bring that lure in up off the bottom. In order to give you a chance at catching those fish, you want to make sure that you retrieve all the way back to right beneath the boat and then finish off the cast with a final vertical retrieve right up to the surface. All right, one last tip on working the MAL lure, and then we're going to transition and go and cover some things about uh, rigging and gear. The last tip I have for you is concerning boat control. Uh, by far, the best way to work this MAL lure is with the boat from a stationary position, spot locked with your bow into the wind. Once you've positioned the boat, you have a couple choices. You can cast with the wind. That's the best scenario. The second best scenario is casting directly into the wind. Your third option, the third distant third choice, is casting crosswind. Crosswind becomes a little bit problematic because that wind blowing from one side to the other is going to tend to bow up blow a bow of slack into your line. You'll have to overcome that each time by taking up your slack with a couple handle turns before you begin your retrieve. So as you're finding your fish on sonar, you want to think about where the fish are and how you can set up on them, how to position your boat 
in regards to the fish before you begin just randomly stopping and casting. You want to be intentional about how and where you position your boat to make your job of retrieving using this sawtooth method easier on you, the angler. Okay, what I'd like to do now is talk about how I suggest you rig up your MAL lure for sawtooth rigging. All right, first we're going to start with a main line. I suggest using anywhere between 10 and 20 pound braided line. The lighter the line, the farther you'll cast and the faster the lure will sink. Of course, lighter line has less abrasion resistance, so there's a trade-off there. All right, using a improved clinch knot, you're going to attach your main line to a swivel. I prefer the 35 pound test in Visa swivel. When you make that connection, you want to make sure that you lube it with saliva, that you snug it down, and then that you singe the end of the braids to uh, prevent slippage. All right, next, on the other end of the swivel, you're going to use an improved clinch knot to attach a roughly 20 inch length of fluorocarbon. I use the uh, suffix product 25 pound fluorocarbon. Any longer than 20 inches in your casting is going to get pretty unwieldy. Over here, I show the braid product that I'm using. Tilt this up a little bit so you can see. It's called Coastal Camo. It's a variegated white and blue product. I like that variegation because on the typically dark water surface, you can see that line move in and out, which is not something that you're going to see if you're using a line of a single solid color. All right, so at the end of the uh, fluorocarbon leader, you can either tie directly to your lure if you know you're going to be changing lures routinely because of water depth or what have you. You can also put one of any number of quick change devices on here. You can use a standard snap. I have on here, it's a tactical angler's uh, clip. It's rated for 25 pound test. Either way, connect that with a uh, improved clinch knot and you'll be good to go. All right, we're going to transition now into a screen that shows you recommendations for uh, uh, rods and reels that I suggest using for this technique. 